Section 1. The Cell Culture Laboratory and Equipment Overview Whilst it is true to say that most cell culture is carried out in laboratories not specifically designed for the purpose, cell culture should be performed in a dedicated facility. Cell lines pose a potential health threat, so you must consult your local safety and environmental regulations. Always carry out a risk assessment using appropriate documentation before working with any cells or cell lines. At the European Collection of Cell Cultures, the cell culture laboratories are operated at a negative pressure to the environment. This acts to contain any potential contaminating aerosols. In order to maintain a clean working environment, the laboratory surfaces, including bench tops, walls and flooring, should be smooth and easy to clean. They should also be waterproof and resistant to chemicals. Floors and walls should be continuous with coved skirting to make cleaning easier and reduce the potential for dust to accumulate. Windows to the lab should be sealed and work surfaces positioned at a comfortable working height. Areas used for the storage of materials in liquid nitrogen should have floors resistant to cracking. Now let's look at the equipment that should be found in an effective cell culture laboratory. Microbiological safety cabinets, also referred to as MSC2 cabinet or hood, probably the most important piece of equipment for cell culture since when operated correctly it provides a clean working environment whilst protecting the operator. Operator and product protection is provided through a combination of airflow, negative pressure and HEPA filters. Cabinet exhaust may be ducted to atmosphere or recirculated through a second HEPA filter back into the laboratory. Microscopes. Regular monitoring of cell cultures is essential as it will provide a lot of information regarding cell growth and general health of cultures. In order to do this, a properly set up inverted phase microscope is required. A standard light microscope is also useful for applications such as cell counting as we will see later. Microscopes are precision instruments and should be well looked after. Always turn off and cover when not in use. Centrifuges. Centrifuges are used to rapidly sediment cells into a pellet to allow transfer of cells into different media or buffers. A small bench top centrifuge with controlled braking and rotors with swing out buckets and sealed caps is sufficient for most purposes. Situate the centrifuge where it can be easily accessed for cleaning and maintenance and away from microscopes which can be affected by vibration. During centrifugation, care should always be taken not to overfill the tubes and to balance them carefully to reduce the risk of damage to both the centrifuge and the cells and reduce aerosol generation. Check regularly for any signs of corrosion. Cells sediment satisfactorily between 80 and 150 G. Higher gravitational forces may cause damage and promote agglutination of the cell pellet. Incubators. In vitro cell culture should mimic the in vivo cell environment. Selection of incubator, its features and settings are dictated by the cell system being studied. 37 degrees centigrade, 95% humidity and 5% CO2 are required by most mammalian cells and media. More diverse cells may need other incubation conditions. Regularly check and replace water in the reservoir. Independently check the temperature using a calibrated thermometer and CO2 levels using a firite gas analyzer or similar. Regularly check CO2 supply cylinder levels are sufficient, especially before weekends and holidays. Incubators are ideal breeding grounds for bacteria and moles which could contaminate your cultures. Minimize this risk with regular monitoring and cleaning. Water baths. Water baths are used for thawing out frozen cells, heat inactivation of serum and warming of media and reagents prior to culturing. As another potential source of contamination from bacteria and molds, water baths should be regularly cleaned and replenished with fresh water treated with a suitable antimicrobial agent. Fridges and freezers. Most cell culture reagents require storage in a fridge or freezer. 
Always check labels and literature provided by suppliers. To avoid repeated heating and cooling of reagents, aliquot reagents into suitable volumes and concentrations. Always label these containers appropriately. It should be noted that pouring from container to container is not normally considered good practice. But in the case of the aliquotting of entire bottles of media or reagents, pouring is acceptable. Consumables An effective laboratory will have a wide range of consumables available. The majority of cell culture flasks, centrifuge tubes and pipettes are available in single-use sterile packs. These ensure a high level of quality assurance and eliminate the need for validation of cleaning and sterilization procedures.